It's Thursday, September 22nd, 2011. I'm Rim, and this is Geek Nights. Tonight, we talk about weddings. Let's do this. Much like Pinkie Pie, I like to party. I like to go to parties a lot. And it's funny that I party... I like to go to parties a lot more than I like to go to work. <laughs> it's funny how when we were in college, we did not party. Like, we very rarely had, like, this is a party. We basically just hung out and did stuff or usually didn't do stuff. That's a party. Or just played games. How is that not a party? Now, see, when I think of party, I differentiate it from hanging out. When I say, let's hang out, I invite specific people to do something. Or I have a general invite, but no, no agenda, no nothing, and I don't provide any food. To me, party means wherever I am, they're providing food and drink and a larger number of people, possibly people I don't know, are invited. How many people makes a party? I think it depends more on whether or not the host is providing food and drink and entertainment. Like, is it provided entertainment or a provided thing? Or are you just at their house and you're stealing their orange juice when they're not looking? What if you come over to my house and I pour you the orange juice? If, you, if it was planned ahead of time, too, is kind of important. Like, if you said, hey, Rim, on Thursday, come over. You come over to my house, it's just you and me. And you've been, but the you orange invite- juice is already poured when you show up. Uh, there's one more step to make it a party. It has to be not an open invite to the public, but a generally, either a generally open invite or some sort of RSVP system. Like, and it has to be broken down to like the family unit or the friend unit group. Like if you say, hey, I send you a written invitation to come over to my house for orange juice uh, and tomorrow and the orange juice is already poured and you show up. And that is a party. Okay. Even yeah. though it's two people? Yes. Okay. Because you can have a party with one person as we learned in My Little Pony. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So the trouble I have is that I, for a long time, was the one who was always hosting all the fucking parties. <laughs> Which means, one, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> And two, Visigoths. Well, I mean, the price of a party varies greatly. But even a crap-o party, like when we like we had everyone over for New Year's, right? And we want to have dinner for one night. That was a couple hundred bucks worth of catering. Yep. That's, which that's was a reasonable. lot more money to us back then than it is now. But well, that's because you're, you're, I mean, that's no different than going to a restaurant. It's just you're paying for everybody. I know. <laughs> if everyone, if you made everyone pay, then it wouldn't be so expensive. But at the same time, that's much more of a pain in the ass to manage. It is. And also, what if someone says no? Then, Don't, then you can't get in. And I found it's a something. It's cover charge. I found something to pay me for the door, bitches. That's right. But I found something more interesting. If you expect people to pay for the food, then they will have an opinion on what food you get. And you know what? I no longer have the patience in my life to deal with anyone's preferences on anything. Yeah, even when I'm at a restaurant and there's people there I'm with, or even people at an adjacent table that are strangers, if they like have trouble ordering or have to like be like say, "Oh, don't do this," or you know, "Give me this without this ingredient," you know, and it's not for an allergy, it's like, "Dude, just fucking order something." No, no, no. To be fair, that's okay at crappy restaurants sometimes, but it's a fine line because a really crappy restaurant. Well, I mean, there's a limit. Like Scott, if you're at McDonald's, you're like, "Can I get extra sauce on this burger?" It's like, dude, come on. <laughs> but at the same time, if you're an ultra fancy restaurant, you're paying that chef to do what he does best. If you know better than him, why are you at his restaurant? Yeah. You know, but it's but like at TGI at diner, Fridays, can... I feel like it's okay to say, yeah, can I not have bacon on the salad? <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, anyway. it's mostly, it's, it, you know, the, the annoyance depends on how much time you spend deciding. True. But when it comes to me providing food for people, if I say like, hey, we'll get catering, what do you all want? I believe that if I take my entire circle of friends and everyone gets to veto one and only one thing. There'll be nothing left. Every possible food will be vetoed except gruel. Yeah. And then no one will want to eat gruel. Every, everyone that. will veto gruel. Yep. But you only get one veto. People will use their first, so the first person to veto will veto gruel. That actually is. a little Before we get into the main topic. And then the other thing that person doesn't like is the one that's going to get picked. Before we get into the main topic, I have a word of advice for all of you punk kids who are going through the steps we went through forming your own crews out there. Eat all food. Well, everyone will eat mediocre, lukewarm delivery Chinese. That's true. Because if you're ordering mediocre, lukewarm delivery Chinese, you're hungry enough to where it doesn't matter. <laughs> But more importantly, if you do have to order food as a group, 
and it's pizza, for example, use the one veto system. It works very well. Just go around the room. First, eliminate anything with allergies, like celiac or whatever, because you can't blame someone for or having an allergy. Or at least, you know, if you have enough people, you're going to be ordering multiple pizzas. Uh, or Chinese food, you're going to order multiple dishes. True. But if you're ordering, like, commu- like even pizza, though, all right, big group of people, two, maybe three pizzas— if two or three people have specific requirements, you're kind of fucked already, and one of those pizzas is going to be plain cheese. Yep. You don't want one of your pizzas to be plain cheese. Uh, that means you failed as a group of friends. Just get and one if, plain cheese and then get an extra meat pizza so if, that you can have something to eat. No, because if you have a friend who will only eat plain cheese pizza, what the hell? That's true. Don't be that guy unless you're allergic and you can't. If you're you allergic to, to everything guy. in the world but bread and cheese <laughs> <laughs> and sauce. <laughs> But anyway, go around the room, pick an order, and say everyone gets to veto one topping. Mm-hmm. You will be surprised how well that works as long as the group is more than like four people and less than like 12. And as long as enough of your friends are reasonable because half, more than half of our people are like, I veto nothing. Uh, yep, which makes it even easier. Like, you know, and the thing is also, you know, everyone has tastes, right? Like I really like sausage yep. or ham. Or pineapple on pizza. I love pineapple in general. Yep. But I want fruit on the pizza. Which is trouble because I my favorite kind of pizza is uh, Hawaiian pizza. How is that your favorite? It's disgusting. <laughs> it's awesome. But it's like, I'm not going to, you know, sometimes they get a pizza with sausage and I just eat it anyway because I'm not a little baby. <laughs> don't be a baby. I feel like, just Scott. Just fucking eat it. You would not eat a Hawaiian pizza, I don't think. Probably not, but it's like... No, I, you know what you would do? If, if you I had to, Scott, I know you. you just pick the pineapple and the ham off, and then it's just a mediocre, slightly wet pizza. Maybe, but the point is, I but, wouldn't cry and moan and no, whine no, 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 about no. it or the do point anything is, like that. This is a good exercise for you as the fucking leader... man up or As the leader up. of your group of friends to, one... Assert your dominance by taking charge of the situation. Two, by doing the game, you can now use mechanism design to influence the way your friends choose in order to get your desired outcome, which is no hassle. One, you have to say, because, and quote, because I am sorting out the bullshit with the toppings, you picky ass motherfuckers, someone else has to call the pizza place. Mm. <laughs> and two, use peer pressure. Someone's going to be like, I want to veto more than one thing, and just peer no. pressure will end that. You can't. Just say no, go home. Yep. Get the fuck out. That's right. Or maybe trade some futures. Like, I will sell you my veto for $10. <laughs> anyway, the point of all this is that I really like parties, but it sucks to run parties. No kidding. The answer is to go to other people's weddings. Ah, oh, shit. Because for, let's forget about the, you know, there's a whole discussion about whether or not. Or any sort, you know, bar mitzvahs, also good. Yep. Pretty much anyone else throwing a party at their expense if I'm going. Fuck yeah. So, weddings in particular. Now, I don't really want to get into just yet the whole thing about, you know, diamonds aren't worth anything. Or you we spend can talk 100- about how diamonds aren't worth anything. They're worth nothing. Yep. Or, you know, you spent $80,000 on a wedding that you could have had for $20,000 if you'd just been a little more judicious in your Hell, planning. you spent $20,000 on a wedding. You could have spent two. What did you waste $18,000 Now, for? granted, I can imagine a $20,000 party. It would have to be a fucking week long. Or it should have to be one or day. a few days long, but you're paying for everyone's hotel rooms and transportation. It could just be one day, but one epic day. And you're paying for their plane tickets, or you're paying for a fucking cruise ship. To me, $20,000 means you had a live band that is actually known by people who aren't you. Yes, as in you <laughs> paid the appearance fee of a famous person for an hour. I know some famous people have appearance fees greater than that, but you can get a semi-famous person. You can get C-list. Yes, definitely. You, you can, can get, get fucking B-list for an hour. You can get B-list if they're local. Yeah. And they're a little desperate. You can also get tons of crazy shit. That's, this, you, you, you would not believe some of the party shit that is available out there if you want to blow your money. And there's a lot better ways to spend that party money than on useless decorations you're going to throw away, you know, a DJ that's, you know, you could just got, you could have bought a whole Serato system for the amount of money you spent on the DJ to, to do it for one day. Well, the key with the DJ hours. is to just get a friend to do it who's mediocrely competent. And it's not that hard. In the, these and days, don't pay ASCAP. Just go for it. Yeah, it's not like in the olden days where you needed someone with fancy equipment. Just about every DJ these days is an amplifier, two big speakers, and some sort of, you know, two laptops or two iPods and one mixer. Dude, I DJed my mom's wedding. 
Yeah. You know what? It cost me nothing. You know how much music I had? All of it because Napster was around. Yeah, I know like bar mitzvahs, sometimes people pay for like dancers. It's like, uh, really? Anyway. What kind uh, of dancers? Like you'll get dancers to go with the DJ. The DJ has dancers that you pay and they come with him. What? I, I've never seen that at any event on the level low enough to be something I would attend that wasn't like... Some sort of like event, like a media event. Yeah, imagine if like you're going and you're gonna do the uh, the horror or something, or you're gonna do uh, the electric slide, and there's like dancers like leading everyone in the electric slide. You paid for them, and they also go and they usually have like they'll usually come with like two hot girls and two hot guys, and they'll like drag people onto the dance floor who are the shy. Wow, like that's their job. I've never encountered professional that. party dancers. Anyway. I was picturing like backup dancers, like just at the front of the room <laughs> behind the DJ. No, they like they you know they're like the DJs like right and left hand people. But you know there have been a number of weddings in the crew, and actually it's kind of fun that weddings in the crew have more often than not been officiated by people in the crew, and everyone in our crew happens to know and be with both sides of the aisle, bride and groom. Yep. So it's kind of like every wedding I've been to in most of my life has been all of my friends having a party on someone else's dime. Well, and there's all these other people there. Well, at least recently. Yeah. That's also family ones. The, but I haven't uh, been to so the many only of those. family weddings. There I, haven't been a whole lot of weddings in my family. At I've least been not to, in my lifetime. I've been to two family weddings. One of them was my mom getting remarried, mm -hmm. which was awesome because was, like all my friends from town just kind of showed up and ate the pig. <laughs> And uh, some friend of the family got married once, and I just went and got really drunk because my parents kept giving me alcohol. And all the middle-aged ladies kept giving me alcohol, and it was awesome. All the people in my family who are married were married before I was born, uh. at least in my close family, and none of the people of my generation. So I'm saying for me, all the weddings I've been to have been the same, at, like the, the people I hang out with at the wedding are the same people I'd hang out with anyway, but yet... There's a party and catered food and unlimited alcohol that I didn't pay for. <laughs> Hooray. But at the same time, right, while it's awesome to go to someone else's wedding, most weddings are unreasonably expensive. And even reasonable ones are still somewhat unreasonably expensive. Now, it is a lot of money to throw a party. And yep. I could understand you would want to throw a party. And it costs a lot of money. But some people... Overpay, notably on the aforementioned useless rocks. Yep. And useless one time dresses yep. and tuxedo rentals and crap like that. Oh my God. And so sometimes, you know, wedding venues when you could have just had it in someone's backyard. It depends. Some, some venues could be worth it. Some if venues. Nice enough. Depends I mean, on the venue. One of our friends got married in a pretty rocking castle, actually. Yeah, but I mean, how much did the castle cost? Actually, my favorite. Party after wedding. It's like a, wedding. a castle is awesome. Party, I would totally party in a castle. Well, the thing is, my favorite party. But how at much any wedding would I pay to, to party in a castle? Was at the venue at night that we they let us like use the venue all night long, and we just had a bonfire and just sat that around was drinking. A, that was an excellent venue that I'm sure was much less money than the castle. That was a very great venue. Excellent. <laughs> but you know, it's like you know, I think our friends for the most part have had more weddings on the reasonable side of cost. Yes. Most people seem to spend a lot more money and also a lot of people get ripped off because when they go to have a wedding, right? It's like you go if you try going to get catering and then try to go get catering but let the caterer know you're having a wedding. Yes, like have like have two people call the same set of caterers for the exact same party but one of them says it's a wedding and one of them doesn't say it's a wedding. They charge you more because it's a wedding because of the same reason funeral parlors charge you a ton of money because there's this emotional grasp they have on you like it's your special day. Funerals you want are your actually the same way. You want your special day to be so great. Isn't it worth it? Your one special day you'll remember for the rest of your life. It's worth that extra 5,000, I right? watched. This is when I was a kid. I remember seeing this, you know, back when local news did a lot more investigative journalism. And I saw a local news thing where they went to flower providers, mm -hmm. you know, botanists. I guess not botanists. Florists. Florists? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if you went to a botanist, you'd get much more interesting flowers. Maybe. Possibly Dangerous toxic ones. ones. Yeah. <laughs> so you go to a florist, and what they did is they went to pretty much every florist in our area, like in the suburb of, you know, Detroit. And they would have one where a guy would go and say, like, he's doing it for some event. 
And he wouldn't say what. He'd say it was like some political function. And a girl would go and say it was for a wedding. A guy would go and say it was for a wedding. And they videoed with a hidden camera how the people treated these three different uh, people trying to get flowers. Mm -hmm. If a girl went to a wedding, it was literally, but it's your special day. These black roses are only $100,000 more, but you'll only have one wedding. Yep. It's your special day. You ripped They'd go off. To, the, to the guy, and this actually kind of pissed me off. They'd be like, "Do you you want her to be happy? How will your honeymoon be if she isn't happy? What if she regrets that you didn't get the better flowers? She'll know." You know what? Don't buy any fucking flowers. How are the flowers going to make the party any better or worse? You for the for the go to party fucking city. It's cheap, and you can get uh, some streamers. And you know what? If you know how to work a streamer, it can look fucking awesome. Actually, nobody's going to complain at the wedding we just went to. I was very pleased that it was real flowers because having been in the wedding, real flowers. If you're if you are going to get flowers, real flowers are very important. Yes. Fake flowers. I've had fake boutonnieres before. And let me tell you, fuck those things. Also, when you do get, you know, that sort of stuff, most of the problem with expensive shit at weddings is that it's a useless or b one time use. Right. Dress is not useless, but it is mostly one time use, which is like, uh. But if you're going to reuse that dress a whole bunch and it wasn't ludicrously expensive, like this wedding dress is for multiple thousands. Yep. If you get a few hundred dollar wedding dress and you reuse it many times, dresses cost a few hundred dollars. Plus, Scott, you say a few hundred dollars. I mean, I've spent over $400 on an okay suit. Well, I spent $300 on a coat and $300 on a kilt, but I get use out of them. Yep. It's, like, if I spent example, $300 on the coat and wore it once my whole life, that would be fucking crazy. The most recent wedding we went to, the bride had... That would be like buying an Xbox and playing one game for four hours and never using the Xbox ever again. I, Scott, bought a PlayStation 1... Sure, not that long after Did you it use it for out. only four hours? I used it for only on one, one game. day? I used it for one game. That's not the same. This Dance is, Dance Revolution. This is wearing a dress for one day for four hours. It is telling that I put a mod chip in it before I'd ever plugged it in or turned it on. Right. You know, a, a ring with a diamond in it is a useless rock and also a we'll worthless rock. get back to the rock. rings. But first off, right. uh, so uh, the wedding we most recently went to, the bride had actually an amazing dress. Like It he, was pretty awesome. Like, it is hard for me to not be amazed by it also dress. gets mad props for being like you know workable a lot of people get you know especially women's fashion is often like high heels you cannot walk in them yep or it, a train or, so long that you need attendance to carry it right like they'll get stuff that is not feasible clothing it do just doesn't work as clothing but this dress worked like you just walk around yep and in general all of our friends who've gotten married have gotten pretty nice dresses that were either very cheap and good looking or will be reusable and we're just awesome. I haven't seen anyone reuse it yet, though. They'll see. Yeah. We'll watch for it. At least, you know, if you can hand it down. Thing is, we need an excuse. But the question is, like, if you were going to hand it down, why weren't you wearing the handed down one from your mom? Um, mm. I don't know. Because styles change. Uh, yeah, okay. Big deal. Yeah. Part of that is I, I like how non-traditional, like, non-traditional ceremonies are way more fun to me than traditional old, you know, standard weddings. Well, I mean, I hate tradition in general. Tradition is never a good reason to do something if it's the only reason. So if something is not a traditional way of doing something, it automatically gets props for me. No matter what? Almost always. And, you know, I mean. All right, I'm beating Flash. No, you know what? I'm going to be Quick Man first. That's not a tradition. <laughs> 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 I'm saying that, you know, if you're doing something and your only reason that you're doing something, you know, or the only reason you're doing something in a particular way is because of tradition. That is usually a bad reason to do it, and instead, you should figure out, you know, what is the best way to do something, or the best thing to do, regardless of any traditions that may exist. But, yeah, Under the Rock, we've talked about this on Geek Nights a lot, but not recently, probably in, like, the 2006, 2007 It's era. been a long time since we talked about this. Because in 2006, 2007, for whatever reason, that was just a hot issue for us, diamonds. Mm-hmm. Fuck diamonds. They're worth nothing. Yeah, people, if you don't know, right, diamonds are worthless rocks. They dig them out of the ground, for, you know, often with very harsh labor, but sometimes not. You can get it certified, you know, mined by not slaves if you want. It costs more, though, of course. Uh, and oh, of course. There's, there's bajillions of them. They're, it's, they're not rare in any way, or shape, or form. They're as rare as the rocks in your backyard. Not only that, we can just fucking make them. And I don't mean make them like, oh, it's a Kirby Zaconia. It's not really a diamond. No, we can make really a diamond. Never mind the fact that From I Genesis defy. From Genesis or other people, you can make real diamonds. I defy anyone who is not a jeweler 
to be, you know, walking down the street, see a ring someone's got on, and be like, that's not a diamond. That's a cubic zirconia. I can tell by you the You have pixels. to get real close to tell. And you know what? In fact, the fake ones or the ones that we make are usually better than ones that were randomly dug up out of the ground. Not to mention the fact that basically the reason diamonds are expensive is because the only people digging diamonds out of the ground is one giant company, De Beers, and they put all the diamonds in a big safe in London. This safe has just a bajillion diamonds in it. A bajillion, bajillion. And what they do is every once in a while, they take a handful of diamonds out in like a briefcase and give them to some jewelers. And that's, they have a very, so it seems as if the world is a very slow trickle of increased diamond you know supply. You don't need to take any of this on faith. A much better way to illustrate the true There's value. There's many documentaries and books oh, and no, videos. Oh, no, no, not even that. There's a very simple way. Take any piece of jewelry that's legitimate, as in, you know, it's a real diamond or whatever, and get it appraised. And see what they say. Like, oh, this is worth X tens of thousands of dollars. Right. So go to then go, go to any pawn shop or any jewelry store and ask them how much they will give you for it. There will usually be a couple orders of magnitude difference between the quote appraised value and the value anyone in the world is actually willing to give you for it. Yeah, GameStop, right, is is not even close to how jewelry goes, right? You think GameStop's ripping you off so when they the buy back So here's the real secret. Game. If you want a really nice ring and you actually, for whatever reason, want it to be real, get a used ring from an estate sale. That's a good idea. Other good ideas. Number one, don't get any rare metals or gems whatsoever. Get something else, such as maybe someone on Etsy will make you something, right? Why do you even need rings? It's because it's a tradition. Maybe you can do something else. Maybe not do anything. Maybe get necklaces or earrings or nothing or tattoos or... Actually, Scott, you know what you should really do? Who knows what? what? You, gotta, you, gotta give, you gotta exchange sets of D&D &D dice. That's a good deal. Hewn from rock. Something you'll use. Excellent. Computer mice, keyboards. Find something to exchange All that right, Scott, you'll I use. Scott, I gotta admit, if I saw a wedding ceremony where they exchanged an IBM AT keyboard and, like, a DOS keyboard, uh, that's my wedding. That's <laughs> kind of lame, but kind of awesome. <laughs> but kind of lame. Anyway, and but the thing is, you can still, if you really want to, if you have some emotional attachment to do with rings or jewelry or something like that. Seriously, though, use at ring. At least get something valuable. Diamonds are worthless, but you know what? Gold, platinum especially, emeralds, rubies, all are actually rare and valuable, as uh, long as they don't have blood on them. Emeralds and rubies can be manufactured, too. They can be, but they're still actually somewhat rare and valuable, and as long as they don't have blood on them. The thing is, I feel like a resin jewel of any kind is a fully functional equivalent for just about any jewel in almost any situation. Yeah, you can also get, you know, various polished stones. I mean, my class ring. That are not ring. the shiny gems, but, you know, stone My class stones. ring from high school. By the way, punk kids, many of you are in high school. Don't buy your class ring. You'll regret it. You'll never look at it again after your freshman year of college. Yep. If your parents try to make you buy it, ask them to give you cash instead. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Worthless but, rocks. But my class ring looks really nice. It has a gigantic fake gemerald, gemerald, <laughs> emerald on it. You know what? Mine too. Looks fine. Well, as a I got the India cut. Mine has gigantic fake, I guess, clear gem, which I, it's not really diamond. Clear? I, no. It's, that was, I guess, I don't know. I got, I got a, a green one because I liked emeralds. And I, got I the also India like cut. green. Anyway. Yeah. And what, what was on the side of your class ring? Uh, one side had like a rocket ship that was like 2,000, and the other side had a computer. Ah, mine went to 2,000, but one side was a trumpet. Oh, right. Yeah, trumpet and a French horn, and it said brass. Brass. And the other side was the dragon. The dragon does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, ne no, <laughs> never never doing. Uh, but yeah, what else? You know, mainly just in general, most people spend way too much wed money on weddings, bar mitzvahs, and other sorts of parties than they should. They could have a lot more fun for a lot less money. Just like, I think, it, did it, was it a thing of the day once? These people on Reddit were going to have their wedding in a mansion, and the guy who owned the mansion canceled on them at the last minute. So they, they went on Reddit, and they said, help us. Reddit said, have it in a field. They called up their uncle who had a farm. They had the wedding with some bouncy castles on the field of the farm for nothing because it's the uncle's field. They had horses that were just there, so people pet the horses, and... It was the amazing wedding that cost almost nothing compared to the mansion that they were going to pay a fortune for. So, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's like there's nothing wrong with having a party. 
Uh, getting married is a good occasion to have a party. Uh, any occasion is a good occasion to have a party. How about we have a party about getting up or yeah. going to sleep? Those are good reasons. But uh, if you're going to have any party, it doesn't matter what the reason, don't spend moronic amounts of money on it. Make it reasonable. <laughs> Though in terms of... Maximize fun. Going to weddings. money spent. I've noticed many things, and now I have, having a wedding most recently on the mind, that I actually find kind of interesting. You can tell the masters from the professionals. <laughs> That's for sure. You, the, a master will drink a lot of alcohol in the course of the wedding. The professionals are lined up Everyone at the open bar. Everyone who's not a teetotaler like me will drink a lot of alcohol during any wedding. It's but if, the professionals... If the bar is open. They do not line up before the bar is open. The alcoholics line up before <laughs> the bar is open. <laughs> the professionals appear out of nowhere the second the first drink is poured. Yep. Ceremony's over. They're in line somehow. Yep. You don't know how they got there. It's Uncle Jim. He's 400 <laughs> pounds. How did he beat you there? <laughs> the middle-aged people... The fathers and the mothers and the younger grandfathers and the uncles will be surprisingly all touchy-feely with the spouses of all their friends, yeah. male and female. I've noticed that every wedding I've been to, mm. which is only horrifying until you get old, and then it's kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the ceremony will have some amount of derpitude in it. Yep. There is no way to not have some amount of derpitude because it's really hard to treat anything seriously. Anything, especially a wedding. It doesn't matter what culture you are or anything. You know, I guess maybe the incredibly seriously religious can keep it serious the whole time. Though I was very proud of our friend Nuri because there were readings during the re wedding we just went to. And she read a speech from Babylon 5. And rather than changing the names of all the languages and races to be real ones, just to make the speech kind of normal, it was a reading about the Mimbari and such. Okay. And the fact that she did it super serial was kind of amazing. I almost cracked up, and I was standing up there just trying not to laugh. Yeah, I, I was just looking at Rim the whole time. He was making his don't laugh face. I was like, don't laugh, don't laugh, Where he laugh, makes his laugh. mouth completely fat, but you get flat, but you can see the corners going up. And sometimes you can see the corners going down really firmly yep. as he you'll wins, the, as he starts the, to win against his fight. The against final the mode is you'll see my cheekbone stick out as my as I clench my whole jaw, followed by... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. uh, it was really hard not to laugh during that. Yeah. Our friend Pete, too, it, he, every wedding he's officiated has been way nerdy. He's making use of his church or universe. Oh, by the way, when you need someone to officiate your wedding, right? If you're not religious and you don't, you know, want the wedding to be about God instead of being now about you. Now you might know a captain. A captain's a good idea. But basically, you know, even if you are religious, right, if you go and get your wedding officiated by a religious person, what ends up happening most of the time is how well do you know that person? Maybe, you know, you're really churchy and you're really good friends with the minister and they know you and you see him every week and you yep. actually talk to him. Then and then, yeah, go for it. But a lot of times people go and they get married by, like, you know, the priest or whatever, and you barely know this guy. You just go to that church once or twice a year for the important times you're supposed to go. Or the rabbi, you know, you go to the, the Jewish temple on the high holidays. You don't really know the guy. So the wedding ends up being, you know, the officiating tends to be generic and more about God than about you, even if you believe in God. You, so I would suggest, even if you do believe in God, to try to get people you know to do it and not some person who doesn't know you. Pete so did it's a about really, you. Pete did a really good job at, at this one. He's done other weddings, too, in our crew. All right. The point um, I was really trying to make is Pete does it because he got the thing from the Universal Life Church. I also got it. Which you can get if you just, you know, if you need someone to officiate, pick the person. And if they can't do it... Send them to the Universal Life Church where they can get this thing now, that lets them do it. Nice aside, I, I joined the Universal Life Church a long time ago, and whenever I get hotel rooms or reservations for anything, I put Reverend as my title. Yep. One time, this saved my bacon. <laughs> we were at, at between PAX East, the first PAX East, and Anime Boston. They, they were like opposite weekends. So we just stayed in Boston the whole week and did a whole bunch of awesome shit. That was good times. I accidentally had one of the hotel reservations a day too long in, for all of our travels. I would have been out like 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. So I called him up, and I'm like, hey, can I just cut this short? I know I'm past the deadline. Da, 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 da. And at first, they're like, no, 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 no. But then she, the, the lady on the other end pauses and say, oh, uh, Reverend, give me a moment. 
And then the manager comes on the line. He's like, Reverend DeCoster, we've made all the arrangements. Is there anything else I can do for you? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, being a reverend is kind of awesome. Yep. And it's Oh, uh, by the way, I hereby forgive all the sins of every, everyone who hears this right now. If you're, if you're in the Universal Life Church. Uh, no, even if you're not. Oh, shit. I have the power to do that. There you but, go. Bam. But what if they uh, deny the Holy Spirit? They can't be forgiven. You know what? That's fine. There's no Holy At Spirit. At least if they're Christians. There's no Holy Spirit. <laughs> and, if, and if you believe, and if you suddenly believe there is one, for you, yeah, there is. Just for you. <laughs> I hereby make them all. Sure. It's <laughs> canon. Yeah. I'm a priest. Okay. <laughs> and you're married. No. <laughs> yeah, you're all married to each other. That's right. Good yeah. luck sorting that one out. Everybody. <laughs> one big blob. <laughs> it's it's marriage instrumentality. Yep. <laughs> wedding cakes. I don't know. I'm a fan of the traditional wedding cake, actually, flavor wise. Uh, like that white wedding cake, I really like. Mm, mm. But every wedding I've ever been to had shit ass ice cream. That's true. They don't use expensive ice cream. At they the use wedding. the cheapest possible. Well, I ice mean, cream. ice cream is real expensive to get good stuff in bulk. Also, oh, 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 forget that. Uh, this reminded me of the things that pissed me off. One. I know there's that stupid tradition where, like, the bride or groom shove the cake in each other's faces. It's stupid. Don't do it. Okay. Two, if you ever take a fork and bang it against a glass because you think that's cool, I hope you just die. Take the fork in your eye. I, just, I hope you die. <laughs> yeah. That needs do to stop. Do not clink the glasses. You can, however, if you are drunk, run your finger around the top of the glass that, to make it sing. That is awesome. That's okay. But, clinking but no with clinking with your silverware. To get them to kiss. If I'm ever getting married somehow and there's clinking going on, I'm ignoring it. I'm just sitting there. No, you should kick whoever clinks out. No, I'll just wait. I'll stare them all down. Fluttershy style. Give them the finger. <laughs> <laughs> however... One person, and only one person in all of history, gets forgiven for clinking. For Scott Johnson, who was getting married, was dancing with his mom, which is both <laughs> an inside joke and literally what was going on. And someone starts clinking. That was an appropriate joke. That was, that was fantastic. <laughs> that was kind of like how when the cake came out, they played the Portal song. And, you know, it's lame to make a cake is a lie joke unless there is literally a cake and some sort of, like, truth about it that can be revealed. Yep. Uh, I don't know what are the things. There's a lot, of, you know. There's a lot of small things out there. I actually am a big fan of the, uh, you know. I I said I don't like traditions, but I actually like the throwing and catching parts nah. because it is like a sport, and I think weddings need more sport-like activities. I know that like at kids' bar mitzvahs usually, and you know, I guess also what are the the, the confirmation parties and things. They'll do things like play games such as Coke and Pepsi and whatever, which are kind of dumb games. But at least they're like structured sport like activities. I think more weddings need like, you know, like I said, the bouncy castle, maybe some kickball, dodgeball. No, catch, you gotta get the, the American flag. gladiator jousting. Ex yep, those things. They do the sumo suits. I'm a big fan of all those things. Especially excellent, because remember it's a wedding. Party right? activities. It's a wedding. It's gonna be you and all your friends. And all of your middle-aged drunk uncles. Well, that's another thing. I am not in favor. Usually these parties, even if they're not weddings, you are charged based on the number of people. I am not in favor of inviting people you do not know. Right? It's like people, they'll invite like a distant cousin, like your mom's second cousin, someone you maybe saw once or twice in your life. Right? You know they exist, maybe. Ah, usually Why? those people are not invited by the people who are getting married. They're invited by the family members. Yeah, a lot of people, right? I know, like, your parents will pay for the wedding and stuff like that because they're so traditional. Or, Tradition. Right? It's like, don't Tradition. don't let them do that shit. Tentacles. Take control of your own shit. Do it the way you want to do it. Invite who you want to invite. Now, some people will be like, oh, they play this game where it's like, well, the person's going to give a gift. So if it costs less to invite them than the gift they give, it, it's a good deal. Listen, it's not about getting, you know, profiting. If you want to profit, you could have taken all the money you spent on this party and invested it in a business or something, right? You're not looking to profit. You're looking to have an awesome party. Don't invite schmucks you don't know. They're not going to help your party be any better. <laughs> Right? Only invite people you know and actually care about to your thing. And even if that's not a lot of people, who cares? It'll be more fun without those other people there. They're just going to, you know, and plus, those people you don't know are always a risk. It's all, there's always someone who's maybe, you know, is taboo or makes trouble or something. And it's that distant guy that, you know, is like the drunken second, third uncle, grandpa's third brother. I have a feeling that the majority of drama at weddings comes from the closer relations. 
yeah, but you can't not invite the closer relation yeah. to the party. That's like, you know. Well, one of our friend's weddings, they did the traditional Chinese, like, challenges for the groom. Like, he had to beat all the bridesmaids at something or we couldn't get married. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Anything that is fun, regardless, you know, when I said, you know, I don't like tradition, it's not, you know, it's if so, you're only doing something because it's tradition. That's the problem. Like the chair if thing. If something and also the, the happens to be like good. That. If something is good and a tradition, well, do it because it's good, not because it's a you know tradition. Though I have a very important uh, admission to make: poop came out of my mouth. Okay. I shit talked. I broke a vow. All right. You might remember some time ago on Geek Nights, I went to a wedding. It was a fine wedding. I was in the I was one of the groomsmen, but I had to rent a tuxedo, and just due to the logistics of renting that tuxedo, it was an unholy nightmare that consumed like eight total hours of my life. Yep. So I vowed I would never wear a tuxedo again unless I owned it. Mm -hmm. I ended up renting a tuxedo for this wedding. Yep. I, I, that's another bullshit, right? It's like people have these weddings and they want all the like the people in the wedding party to wear like the same clothes and they'll force you to go and rent a tuxedo or something, but they'll make you fucking pay for oh, it. Oh, I got around that. I deducted the cost of the tuxedo from my gift. Nice. I had a gift I'd planned. I saw the cost of the tuxedo and I deducted it. Good job. <laughs> I even told him as much. I was like, minus cost of tuxedo. <laughs> nice. But it's like, you know, uh, if you can't make someone else pay for your party, right? A party is either everyone pays collectively or one person pays. If I bring you to what my- What if you had a game where people, the losers had to pay for the whole At least wedding. it's a fair, there's some fair structure, right? It's If I'm having a New Year's party, I can't be like, all right, listen, you 10 people who are close to me, you're all going to pay for part of this, but all these other people are going to get in the party for free. Well, do I get any benefits for paying for extra in this party? Uh, no, in fact, you get a penalty. You have to wear these horribly fitting, ugly clothes. I, I, the closest thing to a benefit was I, we got drink service while we were doing all the pictures, independent of the professionals in line. A, a few a minutes of extra drink service when there's unlimited drinks. Yep. Great. It's, no, there's, it's unlimited drinks to a time. Would you have paid the cost of the tuxedo for that drink service? No. No, yeah, so you got ripped off. <laughs> you can't make someone else pay for your shit. If you want people to do something for I your party. point out that they'll all do it anyway. That's only because they feel obligated. I would be like, you know, if you ask me, I'd be like, fuck you, which is why. I was gonna. Which is why nobody asked me. I was gonna to get around that. It's the same as in the, uh, the you know, it's uh, I attack only one. Yep. Nobody will fuck gang up on me because they know I attack only one. I was going one. to consider getting the fancy utility kilt, the dress one, and wearing that under the re the top of the tux. And that would have been cool. And then I would have kind of gotten around my uh, shit talk. It had to match the tux. Though. It would have matched pretty well. I Like, I, I kind of spec'd it out. But... Uh, the Utilikilt, nice, like, they're already a little overpriced, but, I, like, they're they're good for what they are, so that's why I own a couple. But the fancy Utilikilt is not worth the 800-whatever dollars. No, I didn't know. I thought the fancy Utilikilt was actually cheaper. No, it's pretty expensive. That sucks. $750. Fuck that. For basically a skirt. And it's even less utilikilty than the real utilikilts. Yeah, we talked about, you know, money spent on clothing versus the t number of times and how often you're going to use it. I spent 300 I could buy two more of the fanciest kilt they've got right. other than the tuxedo kilt I spend and still have money left over. I spent 300 plus on a kilt that I use often. The tuxedo one costs twice that and I would use it far, far, far less often. So it is a bad idea. Yep. Anyway, but yeah. Parties are awesome. Just make them reasonable and don't blow your whole money because of a tradition. Use it on something reasonable instead, like, you know, a vacation. Something worthwhile. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. <laughs>